Here we see that ribosomal RNAs are also synthesized as pre-RNAs, but they undergo very different kinds of processing. You may recall that the genes for ribosomal RNAs in eukaryotic interphase nuclei are organized into a nucleolus. This unique chromatin organization arises because of an association of proteins with not one, but hundreds of copies of ribosomal RNA genes organized one after the other as shown in this slide, in tandem. These genes are transcribed into identical pre-ribosomal RNAs that behave as 45S RNAs in sucrose density gradient centrifugation. 90% of the mass of a cell is water, but most of the rest, nearly 10%, is protein. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that the cell must make lots of ribosomal RNA to maintain its stock of ribosomes. The transcription then of tandem ribosomal DNA or ribosomal gene copies ensures an adequate supply of ribosomes for protein synthesis. When each 45S gene is transcribed, a 45S transcript is produced. Within each transcript is embedded three of the eukaryotic ribosomal RNAs, the 18S RNA, a 5.8S RNA, and the 28S RNA. After transcription, the RNA between the 18S and the 5.8S, and between the 5.8S and the 28S regions of the primary transcript, called transcribed spacers, are recognized and cleaved by specific ribosomal RNA endonucleases. The transcribed spacer RNA is hydrolyzed by general ribonucleases, leaving behind the mature ribosomal RNAs. In the right cells, it's possible to visualize ribosomal RNA genes in the process of transcription. In the upper right-hand micrograph is a frog oocyte not yet fertilized. Frog's eggs are quite large. During the development of these large eggs, the nucleolus undergoes selective replication. It's a pretty unusual situation, producing many copies of nucleolar DNA without replicating other DNA in the chromosomes. So in other words, these cells have many more copies of the 45S ribosomal RNA genes than other cells in a frog. You can guess the reason for this so-called amplification. It allows this very large cell to make the unusually large number of extra ribosomes it needs for its size. It's easy to find these genes in the electron microscope. Look at the copies of the fuzzy regions along the nucleolar DNA in the electron micrograph on the right. Each of the fuzzy regions is the length expected for a 45S double helical DNA molecule. Each fuzzy 45S region looks like an old-fashioned lamp brush, the brush you might have used to clean the soot out of a kerosene lamp chimney, hence the name lamp brush chromosome. The region between two lamp brushes is the region between two 45S genes at high magnifications. One can identify likely structures. The bristles on the 45S long lamp brush must be ribosomal RNA in the process of transcription, that is, nascent 45S ribosomal RNAs. Note that the bristles increase in size from bottom to top in this view, which would make sense if multiple transcripts were being made from the same 45S gene, and if transcription happened to start near the bottom of the lamp brush and proceeded towards the top end so if each bristle is a transcript, then lying along the axis of the lamp brush, as if moving down the DNA, are many RNA polymerase I molecules, each catalyzing the synthesis of a 45S pre-mRNA. Recall that RNA polymerase I is the polymerase that transcribes ribosomal RNAs. The fourth eukaryotic ribosomal RNA is a 5S molecule. There are multiple 5S ribosomal RNA genes, but they are not clustered, they are dispersed on many chromosomes rather than being organized into a single place on one chromosome. Each 5S ribosomal RNA is transcribed by RNA polymerase 3, which has the unique property of recognizing a promoter sequence within the gene, that is within the region that will be transcribed rather than to the left of the gene, as is the case for most promoters. After binding to this internal promoter, consisting of two short DNA sequences shown here, the polymerase then shifts to the start site of transcription with the help of initiation factors, and proceeds to transcribe a 5S ribosomal RNA. Here's how ribosomal RNA transcription and ribosome assembly are coordinated. Watch the 45S and 5S transcripts being made by their respective RNA polymerases. 
Next, ribosomal proteins that were already made in the cytoplasm enter the nucleus. Some of them bind to the 45S precursor RNA. This begins assembly of both ribosomal subunits. After the two subunits have been formed, the 5S ribosomal RNA associates with the large subunit. Next, enzymatic activities that are part of the ribosomal subunits themselves catalyze processing of the 45S transcript, the removal of the regions between the 18S, the 5.8S, and the 5.8S and the 28S ribosomal RNAs. The ribosomal subunits separate and are transported through nuclear pore complexes into the cytoplasm, where they will once again reassociate and participate in the translation of mRNAs into polypeptides.